Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Monaghan, longtime Final Cut Pro editor and trainer, and I've even written a book about the subject. And once again, I'm here with Carl Soule, Hi. the uh, expert in uh, Premiere Pro. Well, so. I know a few things. You know <laughs> at least more than me at this point, because I'm a Final Cut guy trying to find his way around Premiere Pro. Um, I'm really interested in switching over. Uh, and one of the things I'm kind of fed up with in Final Cut land is the titling tools. They're they're, they're pretty poor. I'm a, they've always been poor. And we have this little saying in Final Cut land, and that is, yeah, Final Cut Pro has a titling tool, and it is uh, called Photoshop. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but anyways, maybe you could show me a few of the uh, uh, titling tools and, and, and how, how they work here in Premiere Pro. Okay. Well, we'll get back to Photoshop in a little bit. Um, but I want to start with uh, just the, the titler that's built in. We do actually have some really nice integration with Photoshop if you want to use Photoshop. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, you in can. Fact, in fact, let me show you that yeah. first here. Um, if we go into uh, the File New menu, there's actually a listing here for New Photoshop File. And so you can create Photoshop documents directly in uh, Premiere Pro. Um, when you do this, it's going to pick up your uh, your video settings directly from the timeline. Mm -hmm. So it's going to automatically create a new Photoshop document that matches what you're currently working on. So in this case, 1920 by 1080 footage. Uh, it even applies the time base to this. Now, you may not think of that in Photoshop, but yeah. you know there is now a lot of animation that you can do in Photoshop. Oh, and right, we, we right. probably do an entire series just on those tools. Um, but uh, so that's something that will actually come through over into Premiere Pro. So once you do this, it creates a new Photoshop document right in Premiere Pro. It's already in your bin. Mm -hmm. So when you jump back from Photoshop when you're done creating your title, it's right in your bin, ready to drag and drop right on your timeline. That's cool. And if I made any changes in in Photoshop, I assume they would update in Premiere Pro. They're going to update automatically in Premiere. Okay, cool. Maybe we'll look at that later, but right now I would like to see the actual title tool in Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go to create a new title here, and okay. there is some limited animation that you can do right in the title tool, simple crawls, cr that's a good word. <laughs> um, simple rolls and crawls okay. you can do right in the, uh, in the title tool here. All right. um, but let's just bring up a still to start with. Um, once again, when you create the new title, it looks at whatever your current selected timeline is, okay. and it pulls that information um, so as far as pixel aspect ratio, width, and height, uh, that's pulled from whatever the current timeline sequence is. Okay. Just a point to make if you're working with mixed media, you've got you know oh, right. different timelines at different resolutions. Um, before you do this, you want to make sure and select the one that okay. uh, for the title you want to create. So let's just call this one uh, Carl01. Alrighty. And open this up. And a wow. uh, couple of things to be aware of in the, the titling tool in Premiere. I'll go ahead and just resize this down just a little bit here. Um, so that I can kind of scrub through the timeline. There's a button right here to be aware of. This is actually the button to show the background video or not. So you can see right now it's grabbed the current frame and this is actually tied to the timeline. So if I change oh. to a different frame in the timeline, you can see that it's going to show that right inside the titling tool. That's really great because in Final Cut there's no really WYSIWYG way to place text uh, based upon the picture that you've got there. So, so that's very welcome. So what do I do to just to make a title? Do I just click in there? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you've got a series of tools over here on the left. Oh, okay. um, so if you want to draw boxes, circles, different types of graphics, you can do that directly in the titling tool. Uh, oh. So if I wanted to create like a, uh, you know, like some sort of a lower third box, I'll select the rectangle tool here and uh, let me just start uh, drawing something out here. Lovely white box here to get started, <laughs> but uh, you can see over here on the right, we've got all kinds of properties to play with. So very quickly, I could change this from a, a solid color to like a linear gradient. Uh -huh. um, I've now I've got a couple of points here that I can work with. So we can just maybe take this, uh, let's push it into blue okay. on one point. So All now right. we've got uh, a starting gradient there. I can change the angle of this. And there's, of course, the little, uh, little wheel here. So I can choose right. how I want that to look. Um, take this, I'm actually more of a fan of going uh, a little dark on this. So we'll go uh, white to blue, blue to white. We can pick these up, move these around, choose how we want these to uh, to interact with each other Okay. right here. That's great. Um, as far as doing text, I'll go ahead and select the type tool here. There's two different uh, main type tools. Mm -hmm. There's uh, you know horizontal type and vertical type. There's also one that allows you to use the pen tool. You can actually uh, oh, sweet. You can create paths and you can actually draw text along on a path if oh, you want. That's awesome. Um, Let's just take the standard uh, horizontal type tool here, okay. and uh, you know this gentleman here. I could, uh, you know, type in his name. Uh, we're not seeing the text right now. It's pretty dark, and that's because this has picked up the same uh, uh, fill function 
as uh, what we had before. So again, I can just highlight this. Let's change this back to a solid color. Mm -hmm. And let's change this to a nice, uh, nice white yeah. color here. There you go. And uh, then I can just continue to type in here. Make sure I'm spelling uh, Mr. Allardyce's name correctly. Okay. I hope that's correct. Yeah, okay. I think it's about right. But how do you change the font or the the font list? I guess that's over there on the right hand side as well, huh? Exactly. Um, you can actually, if you're using, just go back to the selection tool to start, uh, you know, picking this up and moving it around. Um, the font controls are actually all live at this point. So if I wanted to change this to, you know, a different font here. Um, you know, all I have to do is select it, okay. and you'll see that it updates immediately there. That's great. So I can just choose the font. I can drag that box to make the uh, make the font larger if I want to. I don't necessarily have to go back over there and change the font size. No, um, but you do have numeric controls when you need them. Okay. Um, but I'm not. In other words, I'm when I scale this up at this particular size, I'm not losing any quality, right? Right. Okay. This is. Uh, you know, something Adobe does uh, does really well is uh, working with text, and this is basically, you know, pulling from the same text engine that was used over in Photoshop. Okay. So. Very cool. Um, so from here, there's additional controls as far as uh, you know. We can play with opacity. Right. Um, if you're making a bunch of different titles, once you've got your basic template kind of set up, and let's say you want to run through and do a whole bunch of these graphics that all mm -hmm. look the same, um, this button right here is your friend. This is called New Title Based on Current Title. Okay, so and that's so like if I want to make, um, say, the another title plate with another gentleman's name on just there. Just another name. Okay. Uh, when you click on this, this is the little confusing bit. You click on this, it comes up, says new title. You can give this a completely different uh, uh, name. I'm just going to call this one title 02. Okay. So this is the second one in my project. And it looks like nothing changed. Right. And that's because it's just imported what I just had and back on top of itself. So, so it's waiting for um, my changes here. It's waiting for the changes. And the original is already put or back in my project window? It's, or? it's over in the project bin. So okay. if I go over, let's just move this over, you'll see here's Carlo 1, here's okay. Carlo 2. If I make a change to this, uh, let me pull up my text tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll just select the name here, put something completely different. Um, if I go back over to Carl01, you'll see there's the John Allardyce right. title, and there's my title. Right, two right. separate independent files. Let's say I wanted to have a new project um, with maybe some of the same people in it. Is there any way I could save, because I know in Final Cut I have these things called master templates. Mm -hmm. Is there any way I could save this as a template? Yeah, the template button is found uh, right here. Uh, it's Command J is the traditional keyboard shortcut for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you bring this up, you've got, there's a series of uh, presets that come included with uh, Premiere Pro, but you can also create your own templates. So here I've actually gone in and kind of done a little bit better uh, design work here uh -huh. and created my own. If I wanted to use this template, this little uh, control here, if I click on this, this is where it sounds kind of weird. Mm -hmm. I'm importing my current title mm -hmm. into the template database. I can dig that. That's so cool. It so says, it's says import so current title as template, this top control, that's what I would use. And that saves it into the database, and that means that no matter what project I'm in, I can go back and I can pull that title and start from that title. Awesome. That's cool. All right. So um, now that I've got my title up here, um, let's say I want to put it on the timeline. Um, just drag and drop like a, a normal clip? Or? Just drag it and drop it like a normal clip. Okay. Um, when you want to animate uh, the title, you do that from the effect controls panel, right. and you have all the different effect controls uh, that you would normally uh, work with. You have, uh, you know, the motion controls. These keyframe very similar to uh, the way After Effects keyframes work. Okay. So, uh, you know, from within uh, this effect controls panel, if I wanted to put a uh, fade, well, first off, before I, I even talk about this, if you want, you can use standard video transitions. Premiere Pro treats your titles and graphics just as if they're video files when it comes to okay. working with transitional effects. So if I want to fly yeah. something on or something like that, I could use one of these transitions. Right? Exactly. And I can fade it up using a cross dissolve. Cross dissolve, you can throw that on the beginning of your clip, and mm -hmm. now without having to worry about keyframes, you've added a, uh, a cross dissolve, and you can, you know, click on that, and you can, you know, finesse your uh, your cross dissolve just okay. like you would with two video clips. So one click on the cross dissolve icon in the timeline launches this. Transition editor. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds yeah, pretty it, good. So I can have a custom start time, a custom end time. Uh, is there any dragging ability in this? 
Yeah, the uh, the effect control. If you sometimes you have to uh, twirl this uh, down a little bit to get a little bit, uh, and sometimes you got to zoom in just a touch yeah. to get to this. But you'll see that that same little uh, control there that's used for editing a clip can also be used for adjusting the length of a cross dissolve. Okay. All um, right. So let's say that I wanted to keyframe position or something like this. Could you lay some keyframes in here for me so I see how those keyframes work? Sure. Um, Keyframing is done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this uh, cross dissolve okay. that we have here. There we go. Select my title. Um, so you just select it, you don't have to double click it to get in there? No. Okay, that's cool. Just select it. So from here, let's say at the beginning of this, I want this to start uh, below the frame okay. and uh, kind of move up. Okay. Um, I'll just turn on the stopwatch here to, to toggle animation. That's just like After Effects. Just like After Effects. Okay. It creates a keyframe at the very beginning here. And again, I've got numeric controls here. Um, so I can just grab these and start working with these. Mm -hmm. um, something that this is going to drive people crazy when they first start working with this, because it just seems like this is going to take forever to move stuff around. Right. Don't forget about this. The shift oh. key on the keyboard moves this a whole a lot, lot faster. faster. Oh, I see. That's and helpful. I believe the command key actually slows it down oh. even more. Okay, kind of gears down. Gears Final down. Cut uses a lot of that gear down with the command key. It's the shift key you held down? Shift that? key to go faster, shift yeah. Shift key to go fast, command to go slow. And then from here, if I want to add another keyframe, again, it's the same idea. I can just click this button here. Or in most cases, if you just start moving the value... Right, it automatically keyframes. Automatically keyframes it for me. So, Carl, I know in Final Cut Pro, you just can't select multiple keyframes and drag them at once. In Premiere Pro, can you do that? Yeah, you can, uh, you can pick up a keyframe, you can move it around. Oh, that's awesome. You can do a, uh, a bounding box across multiple keyframes. Oh, I can keyframes. select multiple keyframes. Multiple keyframes. Oh, that's awesome. And if you twirl these down okay. and you get into this uh, velocity controls here, um, this is where you have some little controls in here. Now, these are pretty close together here, but you'll see right. that, again, we have this ease in, ease out capability. Oh, so you have um, Bezier so you control there, Bezier too. control on each of the individual keyframes. And again, just like After Effects, you oh, have these things me. like uh, um, ease in and ease oh, out, automatic, is, uh, automatic set presets on these. That is gold. <laughs> so, yeah, I've wanted so long for these to be in Final Cut, and it's... It helps me to know that they're right here in Premiere Pro mm -hmm. uh, for me to just tweak as, as I want to. So that's that's awesome. I think that's about enough to know enough information to get me started at least. I know there's a whole lot more here. Definitely. There's one more thing that I just like to point this out because okay. this is this is even something that a lot of Premiere Pro editors uh, haven't found yet. This was actually introduced in CS4. Okay. But now with the Mercury Playback Engine, it's so much more useful. Um, blending modes. Oh. Um, working with blending modes, if you create a title and you want to play with how this is going to uh, blend with your video, um, okay. blending modes are actually built right into Premiere Pro. And the best thing about this is these are all GPU accelerated. So, oh, when so you I add, won't have to, maybe wouldn't have to render them? Or? Wouldn't have to render them what? at all. Um, so I can go through and I can test out, you know, a lighten mode. I can mm -hmm. play with this, see how it's going to look with my video. If I don't like that, I can come in here and change this to right. maybe a soft light or a hard light. Whatever I want to add, right. um, as far as the blending mode is concerned, I can go ahead and just work with this and uh, and not have to wait for it to render. So that's just that's another, awesome. another really nice uh, function. Within, and, uh, within Premiere Pro. And the other thing is that I noticed that there's a lot more blending modes than you would have in Final Cut. Like mm -hmm. Final Cut, I think you have maybe six or seven or something like that. Yeah, this pretty much pulls the whole list, I believe, over from After Effects. There may be one or two that are not mm -hmm. in there, but uh, for the most part, this is uh, the complete list of what you would see in Photoshop or After Effects. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a lot of information, so thanks so much, Carl. All right. And thanks for joining us today.